Welcome back to another episode of GALS. I'm Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. And we are right now, we are actually not, if you notice, in our usual GALS studio. We are actually in San Francisco, California, at the Microsoft Reactor Space, which is awesome. And that means that I'm getting to talk to Lauren Tran, who is a uh, software engineer um, in uh, C CSE. Yes, commercial software Com engineering. Commercial software uh -huh. engineering, awesome. So, um, Lauren, um, Tell us a little bit about what you do and how long you've been at Microsoft. Yeah, sure. So I've been at Microsoft for about three and a half years now, and I focus on machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I work with our student startups, um, professional developers, and customers in the different um, ecosystems that we have in CSE, and I help them build out projects um, and work with them on technical implementations of really challenging projects. So it's super fun. Um, diving into the ML is really fun, and it's kind of where my passion is. So I find myself really thinking hard about the problems and trying uh, to, to solve them in the best way. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and we, we talk a lot about like ML and AI, those are obviously really mm -hmm. hot you know, yeah. industries right now, everybody's buzzword uh, laden with it. We've talked a lot about it in other episodes of GALS. How long have, have you been interested in that? Has that been something that's been consistent in kind of your yeah, career? Yeah, it, it has. So um, actually before joining Microsoft, I did my master's degree um, in CS, computer science, and I did my thesis work in machine learning. And so um, my thesis work was all based on computer vision, machine learning, um, image processing workloads, and that's kind of where I really developed that passion. And then when I came to Microsoft, um, I really kind of vectored in that area and all of the work that I've done in the past three and a half years have been very aligned to that um, technology. How much has changed in the space in the last three and a half years? It has changed quite a bit. So, uh, you know, as you know, it's exploding. Yeah. We had a huge breakthrough in ML and AI, you know, roughly six years ago, and then another one three years ago um, with deep neural networks, the compute that we have today, and the massive amount of data that we have. That's really changed the game a lot um, from traditional learning to the more um, advanced, you know, deep neural networks that we have today. So, you know, keeping up is really fun. It, it, there's a lot to keep up with, uh, but it's always fun to learn other tools and, and the new frameworks, and I'm having, you know, a lot of fun along the way. So did you come to Microsoft right after uh, grad school? I did, Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's go back a little bit. Sure. So, so you got, you have your master's in uh -huh. computer science. You focused on, on ML while you were there. Yes. Um, and did you do your undergrad in computer science as well? I did, I did. So I actually did a dual degree. I did computer science and um, business where I uh, specialized in marketing. So uh -huh. um, I saw those two fields as you know very adjacent to each other and I found that um, the technical skills really helped me in the marketing arena. So it, it's kind of funny, actually, after I graduated undergrad, I went to go work for Saks Fifth Avenue as a marketer and I found that all of the CS stuff that I was doing was the stuff that was really valued because you could get really um, hard insights into some of the marketing data. Right. And from there, I figured, you know, I really want to go deeper in this space. And um, I went into my master's degree. I found a passion for machine learning. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny because I, I went to do my uh, master's to be a better marketer, and I ended up just loving machine learning so much that it kind of changed my career path into technology. That's really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you find, though, that your marketing background, that that's helped you when it does come to doing your compute stuff, especially when it comes to talking with people totally. and customers? I totally think that um, it does help a lot because we're, I'm in a particular field where I work a lot with customers and with audiences, and um, being able to have sort of both sides of the fence, the technical and the soft skills and, and how to market um, helps a lot and helps you be more successful in this. So That's great, because yeah. I think that's one of those areas that people either think it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're kind of learning both is really what, what's valuable. So I think yeah. that's great that you had that dual background and that you, know, you went for your master's to get better at marketing and then you're really like, oh, actually, yeah. this is really uh -huh. interesting. Yeah. So how did you get interested in computers going like further back? Yeah, so um, I knew I was double majoring in uh, CS and, and business. And the reason that I, I actually initially started in business and my dad said to me, hey, you should take a class on um, programming. And I didn't really know what that would be like at all. Um, and so my sophomore year, I took an intro to programming class, loved it, decided to add that as my second major and went from there. And, it, you know, the first time I wrote a program and all the pieces kind of fit together 
in a puzzle, it was hugely satisfying. Um, and so going through the traditional coursework in, in an undergraduate to the more advanced coursework in a master's degree was, was hugely rewarding for me and getting super deep in one particular area and working really hard um, on the same problem, solving like the image classification problem. That's what I um, mm -hmm. focused on. Um, that that was super rewarding to be able to apply those skills and to, uh, to really getting to the state of the art at the time. That's very cool. So was, so your sophomore year of college, that was the first time you'd really kind of tried your hand yes. programming? Yes. Did you have an interest in technology leading up to that point or? Was um, I did have an interest in technology, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So I, I knew that, um, my, so I tend to be a little bit left brain and right brain, and I knew that it would fit as far as, you know, what I enjoy doing, but I didn't know how much I would like it. So. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. really interesting. So, um, what was it like for you going like your sophomore year going from being you know a market a business mm -hmm. major yep because uh, i i dual degreed as well i was i yeah. was a business and and i was i was film so it was a little bit different but uh -huh. sort of similar um what was it like going from you know being the business major to then taking that cs class it was it actually was quite natural. So part of um, the business program did have a CS component to it. Right. I just ended up going a little bit further with that and taking the full the full on major. Um, it was it was very helpful in that there are certain marketing and business problems that um, were much more easily solved if I could write the code behind it. And so I found that they really did go hand in hand. Um, it came fairly naturally to me. I mean, I think when I when I started in business, I I liked it, but it wasn't, it never felt like this was perfect. It never felt like it just fit as a puzzle. Um, but when I started with the coding, you know, that, that is what I love to do. And I found myself, you know, at midnight, two o'clock on a Saturday night, still writing code. And that's kind of when you know that you really love something yeah. and you can't tear your eyes away from it. Um, and so I realized that and I, you know, I kind of, I, I took that marketing job with a little bit of hesitation because I knew um, where I, you know, I, I knew that I loved um, technology as well. Uh, but I found that when I was able to um, use that background and apply it to the problems that we did have at Saks, uh, it was, you know, that's the stuff that the CEO was like, wait, how did you get that? How did you know that? Um, did we hire someone to get this, you know, analysis? I'm like, no, I just wrote no, a I program. Just, just, just wrote uh, it. Yeah. so cool. Yeah. So. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so what, what, uh, what language did you start uh, learning? I started in C++. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I focus um, very primarily in Python right. because of you Makes know, sense. my yep. ML and AI workloads. Uh, so working with Python and Keras and TensorFlow and all of that. Um, but initially, very my very first program was C++. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So what kind of led you, once you were taking those classes, into um, you know taking your first program class to saying, I really like machine learning. I really like this stuff. So I was really interested in um, working with images. And uh, what my professor, he did computer vision and machine learning. And sort of, I, I was highly interested in computer vision and sort of the holy grail of computer vision at the time was being able to do image recognition and object detection right. and classifying them. And that was not a very well solved, solved problem at the time. It was before we had convolutional neural networks to really, you know, um, be, the accuracy of traditional machine learning models, but I found that you know it, a lot of it, it it starts with the relationship with um, the professor when you're in graduate school, and it kind of you know I was interested in learning about the different things he did, and and then I ended up you know kind of working on a project that just got me really fascinated about the area, and so I continued working with him and and did my thesis with him. That's very cool, mm -hmm. and so much of that I mean uh, you, you're talking you know, the image recognition alone. Mm -hmm. I mean that's been something that as you said, we've had like major breakthroughs with that yeah. in the consumer space, yes. not to mention in the research space, yes. and, and it's continuing on. And I know that you know lots of research papers, lots of big companies, um, you know Microsoft obviously, but but other you know companies are, are doing lots of work with that too. What do you think? What's the next big goal when it comes to kind of like like um, uh, computer vision and, and and recognition stuff? What do you think when it comes to? I think that right now um, we do image classification very well. We do object detection pretty well. Um, I think that the next goal is to be able to actually um, get you know, robots to be able to clearly see and identify objects. It, it's not, at, the technology is not quite as good as it 
um, will be. It's where when you have a sea, an image with a sea of objects in it, it is it does tend to be very difficult to pluck out individual things, especially when they make up such a small portion of the frame. And so that is a challenging problem that we have. And when uh, you think about applications later, like being able to, a robot, you know, I was at a meetup um, the other day where um, someone was presenting on uh, actually how hard it is to get a robot to recognize a mug and pour coffee into right. that mug. And, you know, because it might think that this spoon is a, a mug just because of the angle that it's shot. It, it can be very difficult. So a lot of times, you know, we think, artificial intelligence, that the machine is very intelligent, and it can be a little bit of a misnomer because it's just a series of, you know, mathematical equations to help us figure these things out. And um, to be able to see the world and reason about it is, is not quite where we you know, ultimately want to be next. So just the simple thing of pouring coffee into a mug is challenging because it's very hard for the robot to isolate it and um, navigate, you know, appropriately. But I think that, um, you know, as, as we get more data, as we make additional, you know, breakthroughs in, in the algorithms that we're using, as we have, uh, as we're getting a stronger compute, I mean, those are the hallmarks, right, right. of deep learning. Um, it, it will get there. It's a matter of when, right? So when you're when you're talking with customers, you're talking with students, mm -hmm. you're talking with other people. How do you kind of explain the the basics of of AI and and yeah. AI to them? So I actually have a. I, I've done it enough times where now I have a little bit of like a mini curriculum that, that I have where I'll sit down and I'll just go, go up to the whiteboard. And it starts from really understanding what the types of algorithms are, what the general classes of algorithms are so that you know what types of questions machine learning can't answer. Most of the time people will come in with an idea, they've heard something about machine learning, they have an idea of what problems it can solve, but um, giving them clarity on the exact types of problems through um, kind of diagramming the different types of algorithms really helps them um, tune and, and refine and they're like, oh, I understand what that is. Um, I can ask this question, not this question. So that's one of the basic things is just getting them to understand what can we ask and what is the type of data that you need. So um, I'll give them classic examples of, um, you know, say something like um, predicting housing prices. So there's very, it's very, very clear that you have this label of what the price would be and then you have these input variables. And so bridging that gap between knowing, hey, I know I need to have data and I know I want the machine to learn something, but I'm not quite sure what, to breaking it down to we have these input variables A that map to a response B and diagramming that and kind of even, um, I like to whiteboard um, certain uh, um, Classifier, so I'll I'll put I'll just put an X Y plane out and show um, points on in in space, right? And that helps them to visualize. So it tends to be very visual. Once you can see it and see how it's working, then um, that helps. And I think that we also have a great suite of tools that helps teach. So um, you know, Azure Machine Learning. Uh, has a couple of components, the studio and the workbench, but for new people, the studio is a really good way to teach them the basic concepts. How do I structure a machine learning problem? What is the data science workflow? And from there, then we can bridge the gap over into um, some of the more advanced topics, building it with Python, using the workbench. One of the big things, you know, uh, there have been all kinds of studies saying that, you know, there's this huge opportunity for all kinds of AI and, uh -huh. and, and ML jobs, and, and there's now kind of this, this big push in big organizations to skill up their employees or, or to teach kind of the next generation coming forward more mm -hmm. about those things. What do you think we can do um, to get people, I guess, skilled up, um, maybe since this is gals specifically, yeah. you know, women? Yeah, to get them skilled up in yeah. machine learning. Yeah, um, I think or it, even get interested in machine get learning. Get interested. Yeah. I think it's about showing really cool applications. Applications, the the scenario, driving it through the scenario tends to be very effective. Where if they can see what um, the end goal is and what we're able to accomplish with it, then we can go back from there. Kind of this top-down approach of. Um, 
you know, here's, here's the solution, this is what it does, and then we can kind of break down the different components. So um, I've seen that scenario-driven approaches tend to work really well in getting interest. And then from there, it's about um, having a community of, of, of people to support you as you're learning. So um, in particular, tonight we're here with um, Women in Machine Learning yeah. and Data Science, and they have, uh, you know, they have amazing meetups around the Bay Area and also chapters nationally. And it's a really great um, group of women, a community of women, and there's a Slack channel where people talk about problems. They're like, hey, um, I have this data, I'm thinking about solving this problem, how would you approach it? Or um, what are some resources I can use? So it's a very supportive uh, environment to be in when you're trying to learn a new topic. That's great, mm -hmm. that's great. When you were in grad school, were yeah. did you have a lot of other women in, in, in your class? Not or? a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot, yeah. So it, you know, it was, I would say a handful and not not that many. And that can be a little bit challenging, right? Because if you look out and you don't see people like you, it, right. it can be a little bit challenging, but I found it to be a very, very supportive network there as well. Because um, it's a lot of people there just to learn. They're yeah. there to learn too. Um, and, and that's what you kind of realize is, hey, everybody is here to learn. Um, we're in school for a reason, right? right? Uh, there's no reason to be um, scared of what you don't know. And, the, and I found that, I learned that very quickly, that the more I could ask questions, the more I could say, I don't know that, um, the quicker I would learn. Because if I pretended to know, if you pretend to know, then you're you're never going never. to get the answer and you're never going to expand. So That's a great point. I think so many mm -hmm. of us, our instinct is to yes. not admit that we don't know right, something. Right, right. Uh, but you're right. If, uh -huh. if, you don't, if you don't admit that, then you can't ever right. learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the coolest application that you've seen for, for machine learning and, and artificial intelligence so far? Like scenario driven, you were kind of talking about before. You described yeah. something really cool to me. One of the coolest things I've seen is when um, a machine is able to look at an image and be able to describe exactly what is in that image with natural language. I think that's amazing because, you know, I've done a lot of study in the field of image and then also in the field of text. And when I was in school, you know, one of the projects I tried to work on is how to marry these two data sets together and get something interesting out of that. It's a really difficult challenge. And so now when I see that, you know, machines can easily look at an image and describe it to you in very com like common colloquial text, I think that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I'm sure there are a hundred others that I could uh, describe, but that's kind of the first one that comes to mind because it was a problem that I really wanted to solve and just didn't um, get to a, a final solution when I was doing my research. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, now it is time for our lightning round. Sure. So I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions awesome. and then just, just answer first thing that comes to your mind. All right, what's the first thing you do in, your, in the morning when you wake up? I have a cup of coffee. So you do that before you check your phone? Or? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. Yes, um, I want to be awake. You want to be awake. awake. All right, what is the most used app on your phone? Uh, I would say messages. Text. Messages, uh -huh. all right, texting. Um, is uh, What's your favorite social network? Are you, are you like, are you text? Are you Instagram? Are you? I would, it's Twitter and Facebook. Twitter and Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, favorite programming language? Uh, Python. Python, yeah. okay. Uh, least favorite programming language? Oh, um, C++. Didn't love where I started. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Python is, uh, it, it's it's much more adapt for what I do now. So right. in in the context of what I do now, it, it's not a great solution. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, uh, do you ever find yourself dreaming in code? I do. I find myself just. I, I'll wake up with a different solution to a machine learning problem. I'll be in the shower and have like, oh wait, I should try that. <laughs> so yeah, I do. So you like shower thoughts, coding thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, text editor of choice. Uh, VS Code. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that does it. Okay. Lauren Tran, thank you so much for talking to us. You're very um, welcome. And uh, we're going to, um, Lauren's speaking um, at this conference, and we're going to put a link in uh, to your talk as well. Awesome. So, very thank good. Thank you so much.